Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to take a walk around the garden to look at 10 different types of perennials that are looking amazing right now. Full of color, lush, beautiful, even though it's been over 100 degrees, and all of these plants are in the full sun. A lot of our first perennials that brought the color early on, Salvia, Nepeta, Veronica, there's a bunch of them, have already been shorn back, so we don't see any color for, from those for a while. They lull for a few weeks while they're recharging to bloom again. So the types of plants I'm showing you today kind of fill in that gap. They usually start blooming right about when that first flush of perennials is done, and then they usually bloom all the way through the rest of the season. They're amazing plants. Also, we garden in a zone six. We're in Eastern Oregon, high desert. So we have dry heat. So even though, you know, it seems like super harsh, you know, 103 today is our temperature or 104, 105 is what I'm seeing on the forecast. It's dry heat. So although it's hot, you can still find a little bit of reprieve underneath a tree when you're in the shade because we don't have the high humidity. Like yesterday it was 101 with 16% humidity. As opposed to those of you guys who like live in the Midwest or the South, you might have like 95 degrees and what, 85% humidity. It's a different kind of heat here. The plants also get a reprieve at night. So we could get up to 104 in the day and it'll go all the way down to 67 at night. So it does take a while um, throughout the day to reach that high temperature and our plants do get a little bit of a break. So every area will be a little bit different and every one of these plants will react a little bit differently based on where you're at. Okay, so now I'm gonna leave the shade and we're gonna head out to the sun and I wanna show you these plants. Number one is echinacea and there's just nothing quite like echinacea for what they bring to the garden space. I just absolutely love them. We have several varieties to look at this morning. Uh, the first one is Delicious Candy. That's the one right in front here and then we have one called Green Twister right in back there. But these grow about two feet tall and 14 to 16 inch spread. So I would say that that's a mature plant right there. Aren't those just amazing? And I love how they have blooms all the way down. See that bud forming there? And then they have blooms all the way up to the very top. But the wonderful thing about these, I mean, in addition to the fact that they can take poor soil, they attract all the pollinators, they're drought tolerant once they're established, but their cones add such an amazing texture once the petals have fallen. So you can see on the delicious candy variety, the petal structure is quite a lot thicker than that of the green twister. You come back here, you can see more space in between the petals there, and these have a little bit of a green tinge right along the edge those honeybees just happy as can be but the cones look at these cones they're amazing I just love them because they are amazing forage for wildlife I leave my echinacea all the way through winter because typically these stems are strong enough to hold through you know even some snow and they just add some interesting texture to the landscape this color remains for a little while after the petals fall off so you can see that beautiful orange and then a little while after they kind of brown like this I still love them. I still use them in cut flower arrangements, uh, even if they don't have petals. Delicious candy variety is a zone four through nine, and the green twister is actually hardy down to a zone three, which is awesome. And this one grows 30 inches tall, so I put this one kind of in the back, and then this one is the 24 inches tall, so I thought it'd be a really pretty layer right here. Then we have a variety called the Price is White. Aren't those stunning? I think it's the contrast from the orange in the cone with that creamy white. It's just so beautiful. Do you see all the pollinators right now? Just buzzing around. So these top out at about 22 inches tall, 18 inch spread, and they are a zone four through eight. Um, every echinacea variety will differ just a tiny bit on the zone and of course the size. I've got one that's a little bit behind the other, but I would say that this drift is not fully mature. This is the biggest of all the plants there but I'm hoping in the end just to have this beautiful mass. And you can uh, divide these every, I don't know, three, four years or so. Next one is Supreme Cantaloupe, and I love this one. I love the structure of the bloom, I love the color. When they first emerge, they're kind of this bright peach color, and then they age out to this soft peach. Very, very appropriately called cantaloupe. I think they've just got a very pleasant color that goes well with so many things and an interesting thing about this variety is that they are a zone four through ten so they can actually handle a little bit of a higher growing zone than most other varieties of echinacea and they grow about two to three feet tall and maybe a foot and a half wide also you guys they are roofing next door so if you can hear all the hammers and nail guns and such that's what's going on so i do apologize for that next one is sombrero granada gold I need to get a few more of these to finish this drift, but I planted them next to this new um, Agastache 
called Royal Raspberry. I think that these colors together are so pretty. Oh my goodness, isn't that gorgeous? But I like the stockiness of this plant. I also like when the blooms are first coming out, you can see kind of like that creamy white color on the underside of the petals, and then they open and turn downward a bit, and you can see that just very saturated gold color and then the bright orange cones. So this one grows about 18 to 22 inches tall with a spread of about two feet. So, I mean, these two plants will get quite large, but I feel like I could use a couple more when I come across this variety again. Zone four through nine on that one. Now this next variety we planted brand new this year, and I'm trying to stick to showing you varieties that have been in the ground for a few years at least. So we have a really good representation of what they look like. But I also wanna show you what they look like in the beginning because it takes them a season or two to establish and to thicken up and to turn into the types that we've been looking at up to this point. And I know the weight can be discouraging, the weight for your plants to fill in and look beautiful and kind of like meet that vision that you have for your space, but they all start out smaller. It takes them a while to root in and to fill in. Some plants, it takes them longer than others. So I thought maybe it would be encouraging to see what these kind of look like, a first year plant. But honestly, I'm really happy with how these are doing. You can see, and we'll probably put pictures on the screen anyway, but you can see you know, what these blooms look like and they are looking good. Like they're forming up new buds and the leaves don't look droopy or anything like that. So we're, we're on our way. I also planted two other varieties of Echinacea brand new this year. So a drift of color-coded Yellow My Darling, which are a bright, beautiful yellow, and then the Raspberry Beret, which is a brand new one for next year. And those look quite a lot like the two that we just looked at now, so we won't go take a look at those. Number two on the list is Russian Sage. I'm gonna show you real quick a first year planted Russian Sage, and then we'll go take a look at the one I planted last year. So this is the first year planted Russian Sage. This is the denim and lace variety. And these were planted last year. <laughs> Isn't that an incredible difference? I think these have quadrupled at least in size and that's what these will do if you give them full sun and don't fuss with them too much they don't want to be overwatered. they don't want to be fertilized they like heat they like uh, dry conditions they like crummy soil and the pollinators love them can you see all the pollinator activity they're just incredible plants they've been in color like this for probably about 10 days maybe two weeks already so probably about the first part of july and then they look like this through a hard frost. There's more over here. Look at those. So they grow about two and a half feet tall, maybe a little bit more than that, and about three feet wide. And you cut them back. I cut them back to about like two inches above the ground every single um, either fall or late winter, early spring. And then they come back fresh from the ground every season. They pair beautifully with lots of different things. I mean, here's the echinacea we were just looking at. And you can see how beautiful that color combination is right there. But they're just such a low maintenance, easy plant that provides so much color. And this is what they look like paired with yellow. I feel like purple is so versatile. You can pair it with so many different things. And they're a zone four through nine, so very tough plant. And that brings me to number three on our list, which is Heliopsis or a perennial sunflower. This variety is called Tuscan Sun. And this is a glorious stand. <laughs> of Heliopsis right here. They've also been in bloom for several weeks now and they'll just keep on going all the way through a pretty good frost. Now these were just planted last year. Let me back up. Last year, can you believe that? I think I planted 17 or something like that in this area, which I thought might be overkill, but I don't think so. I think the larger the drift of things, the more striking they are. And I would say that year two, they're already nearing their mature size at least. Uh, in terms of height and width, they'll still like clump out further. So in the end, they'll be, you know, even thicker than they are now and I'll be able to start dividing them. Uh, but they typically grow about two feet or a little over. These are definitely over two feet though. I should bring a tape measure out here with me, honestly. And then they grow uh, about two feet wide and they are a zone uh, three through nine. Aren't they incredible? Also pollinators. Pollinators love them. You can tell they like the full sun. You can tell that they like, or are adaptable at least to high pH soil, because that's what we've got. And I remember at first Erin asking me about the color because typically I put more subdued colors in our garden, like soft yellow, but I just think that these are so fun and so appropriate for mid to late summer and going into fall where my, my focus shifts a little bit and I'm more drawn to warm colors. I mean, aren't we all, when we get to fall, we kind of crave those autumnal colors and these, 
just are so pretty during that part of the season. I love them. Number four on my list are yarrow. There are a ton of different varieties. This one right here is a Firefly Peach Sky. This is also gonna be another example of a first year planting. Just planted these a few weeks ago and then I'll show you what the ones I planted last year look like. But this variety, I love that peachy pink when they first come out. And then as they age, they turn to this soft yellow. And I never deadhead these. Like you can shear them back like a normal perennial and let them reflush all fresh. But I like to use all the different colors, like the different stages of bloom in flower arrangements. And then when they dry, they look really pretty through the winter. Beautiful winter interest and I cut them still for uh, dry flower arrangements. They're awesome. So over here, I planted kind of a drift. There's two here, and then the drift carries on over through this area, and I think they look really pretty with this ginger wine nine bark. And isn't that gorgeous? And here's our representation for second year planting. Isn't that amazing? Amazing growth. Now, yarrow is another one that doesn't wanna be fussed with very much. They don't need much fertilizer. They don't wanna be overwatered. Uh, they want full, full sun. They tolerate poor soil. They attract tons of pollinators. <laughs> so many good things I could say about these. And you can see, like, I'm a little bit past the time when they are in full, like, peach-colored bloom. And this would be the time if you wanted to shear them back and enjoy just fresh bloom color on them again. You could do that at this time because if you look down in the plant, you can see new buds forming all over but I like to leave them. And you'll still see all those new colors coming up, all the new blooms, they kind of push through and um, kind of add that variation. Gorgeous. Look at those. So this particular variety grows about three feet uh, tall, two and a half feet wide, and there is zone three through eight. We did plant one called Firefly Sunshine over here. So it's a first year plant, but I'll show it to you. So right here, and you can kind of see that they're past their first stage of bloom but this one shows some really nice color. These are a bright yellow yarrow. They're so pretty. Number five on the list are daylilies. So check these out. This variety is called Orange Smoothie. Just planted these last year. They're looking amazing. Oh my goodness, there's a butterfly on the Agastache. Hang on. I don't know how this one didn't make my list. I should do an honorable mention category for Agastache. Anyway, orange smoothie daylilies here. These grow about two feet tall and two feet wide and they are zone four through nine, uh, but they just provide so much color. Um, and these, like as the blooms fade, let me see if I can find one. Yeah, they just kind of fall off on the ground and new ones form up. So they just are in some constant state of bloom uh, throughout the summer months and through fall. And I really enjoy the texture of this plant even before they start sending up bloom stalks. So, you know, the stalks come up quite a bit higher than the rest of the foliage canopy. I need to come out here and do a little grooming on these to clean up the bases, but the fresh growth in the spring is just so beautiful and vibrant and clean. And I just love it. Yeah, these two are a beautiful pair. I can't remember what variety of Agastache that is. I'll try to see if I can find it. And then that orange color, oh, pretty. This right here is a variety called Storm Shelter. Isn't that gorgeous? These were just planted this year, just a few weeks ago actually, and they're doing beautifully so far. But I love this color, that kind of smoky pink with the plum, and they're kind of roughly around the edges. They look really pretty with the Coreopsis. This one also didn't make my list, and it should have. Coreopsis is awesome, you guys, through the summer. Lots of different varieties, lots of different colors, but this color of pink, I'm gonna just pop one off just for the sake of showing you how beautifully these are matched. Isn't that so pretty? Then there's this beauty called Sound of My Heart. These were also planted this year. So I'm very happy to see some bloom activity, but these have more of a peachy tone to their pink and a lot more pink than plum, while the uh, Storm Shelter has a lot more of that dark plum. So these are just a little bit brighter and the margin is so distinctive. That plum around the margin, oh, love that. One more variety of day lily I wanna show you by the chicken coop. We've got three going bananas daylilies up here. And these just bloom and bloom and bloom. You can see they've already been blooming. There's bloom stalks already done and they're just throwing out new ones all of the time. And I really love the soft yellow of these blooms. I think it's so pretty, especially because I 
lean toward a lot of soft purples in this area. And we have the Zephyrine Rose, which is a pink. I felt like this was such a good complement. And you can see right now it's in the shade because it's morning time. In the afternoon, they get nailed with sun. Just absolutely. And they just, they love it. Side note, super bells are looking really good. Number six on my list is lavender, which we happen to have one right here by those going bananas. Isn't that a pretty combination? They look so good together. And I love the fact, so I have a lot of this particular variety around because it stays small. 12 to 18 inches tall and wide. We'll go to the front of the vegetable garden fence here in a moment, uh, which those are in full sun right now, so we won't be able to see detail quite as good or the color quite as good. Um, but these are such a deep color, and you can see that the calyx that holds the petals on is also a deep purple. So even after those petals fall off, it's still a beautiful color. And lavender is one you can shear back as well in the summer after the first flush of bloom is done. And I think the ones in front of the raised bed garden over there are a better representation of that. Uh, but you don't have to necessarily go in and shear the whole plant back. If you have the time, um, you can go in and just individually take out spent blooms and they'll still throw out really pretty color. Um, but the one, so this one only gets afternoon sun. So it's not quite as robust as the others that I have. And ones that are even in more shade right here, I'm going to eventually have to move these out because I can tell a definite difference. Like even the foliar, like the foliage canopy there is a lot more weak looking than ones that get the full on sun. This area used to be sun, <laughs> but this birch tree has really, I mean, it's doing what I want it to do. When gardens are brand new, even if you have trees planted, you have to plant full sun things because they just don't provide enough shade yet. And then in a few years, you have to start shifting things out. So that's what I'm going to have to do. But lavender is just an amazing perennial, no matter what. I mean, it just, it can take the heat, it can take the sun. It's another one that doesn't need a lot of fussing. We fertilize ours probably once a year is about it. And it just performs. So you can see it right here, right in front of the garden fence in the full sun. And on camera, at least, it's a little bit harder to see um, the color, just a little bit. It doesn't look quite as vibrant, but you can see how robust the plants are and how wonderfully they've done. These are four years old. So the one in front of the chicken coop, I think might be two seasons old. These are a couple years older and just looking great. I do have a sensational lavender right here as a centerpiece in this pot and isn't that amazing? So the foliage canopy is actually way far down in the plant and these are just super long stalks. So these are really good for harvesting, I think. And I'm actually kind of excited at the end of the season to take this out of the pot. And I've actually got two more in pots in front of the greenhouse over there. And I'm gonna plant them out in the South Garden. And I think they're gonna be absolutely gorgeous. These do have longer bloom spikes than the Sweet Romance. Every variety will bring something a little bit different. I've also got some Platinum Blonde Lavender back behind the greenhouse that I need to plant out in the South Garden. It's got a variegated leaf. Um, and I also love Munstead. That's what I had a hedge of in our last garden before we moved here. I don't know why. I don't have any more of it here now, but I'm planning on adding a whole bunch of other varieties. I want to kind of dot them around in the South Garden out there because I think they would really thrive and love it. And they just look good for so much of this season. Number seven are daisies. Aren't these gorgeous? This is a variety called Daisy May. And these aren't necessarily one that will continue blooming all the way through the season uh, because they will start to, you can see that these are already starting to peter a little bit. Uh, but I noticed, and I'm including these in this category because these start kind of getting into their peak growing season or their peak, peak bloom season when the other perennials, the first flush, are looking pretty poorly and needing to be cut back. These kind of overlap those just a little bit and then they go further into the season than those first perennials do. So these, you can deadhead these and not shear them back and just continue enjoying blooms. But if you have a whole bunch of plants or a whole bunch of daisies, you might just wanna shear them back and let them come back completely fresh. And by shear back, I mean, you can come down in here and you can see more buds down in here. So there have been years where I'll go in and shear them all the way back, like an inch or two from the ground. It just takes them longer to rebloom. Um, if you wanna go in and kind of do it individually and find where those bloom, those buds are, you can just trim back to where those buds are and then they will be in bloom a lot faster. But I have been so thoroughly impressed with this variety. In fact, Aaron and I were out here last night and he was just commenting on how much he loves these. They grow about two feet tall and 14 inches wide and they are a zone five through nine. I've got more down here. Aren't these gorgeous? I mean, if you look at the edges, you can see where the blooms are starting to fade, but we'll enjoy these blooms for a few more weeks yet. 
Um, and then, like I said, if you want to take the time to individually deadhead, you can do that and they will still bloom through the season. So technically they're an all season bloomer uh, if you want to take the time to do that, or you can shear them back and have a little bit of a lull and then enjoy blooms a little bit later. While we are over here though, there's the daisies. I did want to point out the white yarrow. It's very bright and very beautiful and tough as nails. Number eight on my list is ornamental oregano. Just look at these loaded with blooms. This variety is called Drops of Jupiter. And the thing I like about it so much is the contrast between the leaf color, which is chartreuse, and that beautiful kind of, kind of smoky purple. And the pollinators love it. Now this drift is kind of in the shade right now. It'll be in the, the sun this afternoon. I'll show you another group I have out in the South Garden that are in more sun right now but they're doing it beautifully. They grow about two feet tall and three feet wide, so just one of these plants is going to be quite the presence in the garden. Like you wouldn't need very many of them to create a striking display. And they are a zone four through nine. Let's head out and look at the ones in the sun. I just wanna sit here and watch. Oh, there's a bumblebee on the clematis. That's actually number nine on my list right here. The Stand By Me Lavender Clematis. Did you see the bumblebee? Awesome to see. But back to number eight, the drops of Jupiter looking beautiful and bright in the sun. And the pollinator activity is just amazing on all of these plants here. In fact, I um, cut back this pink profusion salvia not long ago, and it's looking really good. It's starting to bloom a little bit again. This whole little grouping is gorgeous. I've noticed that the more sun these get, the more yellow uh, the leaves are, the more on the yellow side of chartreuse. That's kind of true of a lot of plants. The more sun they get, if they're a sun lover, kind of like lemon coral sedum. If it's in the shade, it's more green. And if it's in more sun, it's more lemony. Just a beautiful contrast. Okay guys, number nine, the bush clematis. So there are two different kinds. There's Stand By Me, which is a blue, uh, more on the blue side. And then there's Stand By Me Lavender, which is brand new for next year. I planted these this year for you guys in a video and boy, they looked kind of crummy for a while. Um, and they kind of tend to, unless you get your staking system, I got these stakes from Gardener Supply. They're just little round rings that will provide some support. I mean, they do come on little trellises, but they quickly outgrow those. Um, but I sheared mine back just a little bit, just sheared the tips off and this is what they've done. And I've noticed because I have the Stand By Me variety too, they're in another part of the garden and not staked up. So they're all kind of flat. That's the thing, you do need to stake these. It says that they'll lean on each other for support, but I haven't really found that to be all together. Maybe it's just our wind. I find that supporting them makes them healthier and look better. But anyway, I don't know where I was going with that, except for I have noticed with the Stand By Me variety that they're always in some sort of bloom. And their blooms, once they're done, the finished spent blooms turn into like these little white puff balls that look really pretty and I love to use them in arrangements. These are just so gorgeous and dainty. And they'll grow three feet tall, three feet wide. So pretty good size perennial for the garden. In fact, um, on the west side where we have the other drops of Jupiter right behind them, I planted seven of these. So I wanted to try the same kind of grouping out here in a lot of sun, and then the same grouping over on the west side where it just gets about half day sun. See the difference in, in uh, growth. And these are a zone three through seven. So those of you in really tough cold zones, this one will do it. And the last one on my list for today, number 10, are alliums, ornamental onions. The variety I have is serendipity. I almost didn't include them in this list, you guys, because they're not quite in full bloom. We can toss some pictures up of what they look like, but they are so incredibly close and they're such an amazing presence through the hot part of the summer. I mean, imagine this beautiful purple globe next to those beautiful supreme cantaloupe echinaceas. I mean, just amazing. They have a really clean, striking growth habit, I think, and they grow about 15 to 20 inches tall. So I would say that these are about full height and then they spread out about 10 to 15 inches. They don't take over um, like you would think they would. Uh, there are some varieties that will self seed. I haven't had that issue anywhere in my garden. I had some of these in front of our gazebo. In fact, I think I have some pictures. I'll try to root, root them out of my photo reel, uh, but they are just absolute perfection. I just think they're so pretty and I actually even like them when they're in bud form. They just have a really pretty kind of magical look to them. And these are a zone four through eight. We're just, well, we're just developing all this space out here, but I've got a coral berry behind them and a um, purple haze, right? Butterfly bush, purple haze. For some reason, I can't remember the name of that butterfly bush. And just beyond the alliums, there's a, a sedum called coral jade. 
Sedums should be on my list too. <laughs> so many plants are looking so good right now. These are in bud stage right now, but isn't the color gorgeous? It's kind of like a purple brown green. I don't know, it looks really pretty, like a smoky color up next to the cantaloupe echinacea and honestly these as well that kind of purple color they just blend beautifully and these bloom a beautiful kind of coral pink color and once the blooms open up on the sedum and on these alliums this is going to be pollinator central right here it's going to be really fun i got a little spot right here for something maybe another echinacea. And that is gonna be it for my list of perennials today. So many things looking pretty right now and things I forgot to even put on my list like the sedum and the coreopsis and the agastache that we took a look at today. And it's just such a good idea, even though it's hot and kind of miserable outside this time of year, to look at every area of your garden and just determine those spots that are lacking that kind of punch, that color that maybe you had it earlier on uh, in the season, but you're lacking it now. And what can you add to those spaces just to make our gardens interesting and pretty all year long and it's a it's a process you guys I mean it is it's a process to figure things out and I move stuff around all the time I put stuff in places where I end up not liking it and I have to move it completely to a different area of the garden that's just how it goes and sometimes like with the lavender by the chicken coop you plant a full sunflower that then needs to move out a few years later because it's not getting enough sun so it's just it's a process and it's it's a fun one though it's fun to learn about new plants so I hope that uh, this video today gave you some ideas I hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one Bye.